Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending today's Around the Kitchen Table with Global Distribution session on the upgraded Simply Workspace with Embedded Axle AI. As we navigate these unprecedented times, we hope everyone out there stays safe. Today, I'm joined with a number of industry experts. My name is Alex Grossman from Simply, and I'm joined with Nick Warburton, who is our CTO with Global Distribution and with Simply. Nick? Pleasure. Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, thanks for the introduction. I'm, I'm absolutely delighted also that we're joined uh, by uh, a familiar face to, I'm sure, everybody here, Sam, the CEO of Axel. Uh, uh, so over to you, Sam. Thanks so much. Yeah, appreciate it. And also, Neil Blake is with us yep. today. He'll be uh, conducting the demo, and uh, he, he manages our European business. So. Uh, Thanks so much for, for the intro, and uh, we're delighted to be working with Simply and Global. Uh, and uh, so um, with that, I think uh, it, first thing I want to mention is feel free to ask questions during the presentation. Um, there, there will be uh, plenty of opportunity to do that. And uh, you know, also, if there's any, uh, uh, any questions that, that aren't right for that second, uh, just lodge those and we'll, we'll try and answer those at the end at the end of the, the presentation and demo. Yeah, thank you, Sam and Neil, for joining. Yeah, and everybody, as, as Sam said, if there are questions below your player, there's a text field that you can answer the questions in. So uh, before we get started, what I wanted to do is I wanted to just give you an introduction video, just, just showing you a little bit about the Simply Workspace and the upgraded version with Axel AI. Well, for most of you, that may be the first introduction to the Simply Workspace with Axel AI, but hopefully it's not the last. So if we're all okay, let's get right into it and start talking about it. I think the, the first place we wanted to start today was to really talk about the, uh, the agenda we have. And if we can, uh, let's, let's talk about the three areas. So one of the areas that I think uh, we, we first need to really hit on is what is the Simply Workspace? So we're gonna drive through a number of pieces of what the Simply Workspace actually is. The, we call that a recap. I mean, for some of you who have heard about it, we've been, uh, we've been working with the Workspace for a while. The second thing was we really want to talk about 
what the benefits of the Simply Workspace are with Axel AI. And, and that's where our friends at Axel are really going to come in and, and help us with that. We're also going to talk about some of the unique features that we put recently into the Simply Workspace to, to add, add more value to it and to make it easier, if you can believe it can be easier than it is, and also a few deployment examples of the Workspace with Axel AI. So let me start by actually uh, talking about what the workspace is. So it, it, it's very simply the industry's first affordable high-speed multi-user Stornex 6 powered Thunderbolt 3 complete SAN solutions. And what that really means is that this is something that's been designed for media, built for, for deadlines. You know, we really feel that the workspace is a, a unique product that fills a need in the market that no one's been able to do. The idea of having something that's very portable, very simple, but to be powered by Stornex 6 and be Thunderbolt compatible from the start it is really, really a big deal. It, it's fast, it's scalable. Nice thing about it, it's collaborative. Up to eight users can share a high-res workflow. And what's really nice about it being desk side is that it's whisper quiet, it sits next to a desk or, or within a work group, and you don't have to worry about hot, noisy, rack-mounted SAN infrastructure or adapters things that we were worried about for so many years that we couldn't get away from. Now, what's really nice about the Thunderbolt aspect is when we, we, we talk about Thunderbolt, there are really only two interfaces that give you guaranteed in-order delivery of data, meaning that you can have uninterrupted editing and playback and also, of course, scrubbing through the timeline. And those three are Fiber Channel, InfiniBand, and Thunderbolt. So Thunderbolt is in, in good company with that. But the problem has been with Thunderbolt, the sharing it has been just about impossible. There are a few solutions to do it, but nothing is done in a very elegant manner. And the, and the other problem is if you want it to share and you want it low cost, you had to go to something like Ethernet. And Ethernet, as we all know, has unpredictable performance. Uh, sometimes it can be great, sometimes it can be less than great. The more users you add, sometimes it can be a problem. But as you'll see, we can blend Thunderbolt and Ethernet in this system and be able to deliver the best of all worlds at a very low cost. So you get true SAM performance over a long distance, and we're talking up to 50 meters with Thunderbolt with no hassle and with direct connection. From a performance standpoint, I'm going to let Nick drive through this a little bit, but you'll see the Simply Workspace is really an incredible performer. Nick? Thanks very much, Alex. Yeah, we've done uh, an awful lot of testing since the the, the Simply Workspace debuted, uh, and one of the things that you know I've come across at uh, my years turning up at sort of uh, various trade shows, NAB, IBC, is we always have a lot of conversations with customers that start. I bought a NAS, and I bought you know the, the you know I'm not going to mention by them by two net by names, but there's a couple of you know well-known brands out there, and it starts with I bought one of these NASs, and it and it sort of worked, but you know now it doesn't, and now I'm copying data back and forth from you know my NAS to local drives, and we're we're not sure what content is where, and you know is it backed up properly, and and this is really where you know uh, simply have come to you know this is really where the workspace is, comes into its own, is it providing that kind of high performance uh, block level as, as Alex was talking about performance to, to workstations so you know in terms of performance we're more than capable of doing all the kind of uh, HD and 4k kind of ProRes um, um, codecs uh, you know to meet the demands of, uh, of, of those sort of workflows so there's no no more copying data to and from uh, you know, drives to work on and, and then pushing it back. And that's one of the, the key advantages of the workspace. Yeah, I think that that's a really a big deal. And the, the second thing is really collaboration. And when we talk about collaboration, what does it really mean? It means sharing at the level of a file uh, so that the same people can work on the same file. What we find is that one of, one of the problems is when you get, it, get to lower cost systems, especially as you get to lower cost NAS systems, what people end up doing is they end up running out of performance on the system because of Ethernet, because of just the internal system performance. They have small processors. Maybe maybe the RAID isn't as fast. And people end up copying the files to individual workstations to work on them. Now you have this issue with version control. So as soon as you copy something, now you have two copies. Which is the last? Where does it go? How do you sit it? Not to mention it takes twice as much room and it also requires you to have incredible performance at the workstation 
And so now you're having to buy external drives, another point of failure. With the uh, Simply Workspace, everything is self-contained in the system, and you actually run off the file that's on the system, and multiple people can read it, one person can write it. And it's all controlled by a piece of industry standard software called Stornex 6, the leader out there for sharing. And this also is very nice because it's the only system where you can use Stornex 6 and you can directly connect via Thunderbolt. No adapters, no switches. And for those of you coming from XAN, it's 100% XAN compatible. So it feels and works just like XAN, only better. And you can add up to eight Mac, Windows, or Linux clients. And there are ways of being able to reshare. To go farther than that, we're going to talk about that. So last thing on this, uh, I'm going to mention this as well as content protection. We've done a lot of work with Simply Workspace to ensure that the RAID stack and, and the components that, that give you RAID protection are built, are built into the system. It has a lot of really nice features, such as RAID 5, RAID 6 protection, hot swappable driving modules, whisper quiet fans, the metadata for, um, for the SSDs, or the metadata for the actual Stornex lives on SSDs in the system, so it's not only fast but well protected. And we use NLSAS hard drives, which are the industry standard out there. So this system is scalable in capacity and protection. And with the new upgraded workspace with Axel AI, the Axel AI database actually lives on the Simply Workspace. So you don't have separate servers, you don't have separate storage, it's all right there. So that this gives you a lot of capabilities that you normally wouldn't get with other systems. Okay, I want to just bring us back really really quickly so that we could uh, we, we could talk a little more about this so I think that one of the uh, one of the areas that that workspace um, you know has has come under question because we haven't talked a lot about configurations and why we chose certain configurations and how these configurations would work so I want to bring up a chart and I want to have Nick drive us through some of the configurations great so oh, brilliant so at the moment uh, we're shipping uh, uh, four, we have four main uh, SKUs for the workspace. There are, there are other ones that we have for upgrade options, but the four main uh, part numbers we have are for a 48 uh, terabyte, a 96 and 168 terabyte. So they're, they're using four, eight and 14 terabyte drives. And we're in actually in the process of qualifying uh, the latest uh, 18 terabyte drive. So as, you know, as uh, higher capacity drives become available, we'll be moving to qualify them uh, as, as they come out. So. Uh, here we can see the usable capacities. In this case, we're, we're kind of using it RAID 5, although we can configure to RAID 6. It depends on the, the customer's requirement. Uh, and uh, the Workspace 4896 and 168 come with four Thunderbolt ports, uh, but you can add another unit side by side to give you not only eight Thunderbolt ports, but you can also use that to obviously get you more capacity. So you can double up your capacity and you can almost double up on your performance. And this is, you know, another advantage over those kind of uh, prosumer NAS units is that once you've got one, the only real option is to add another one and, and another one. You're not summing up the volume or the performance, whereas with the workspace, we can sit two systems side by side and we can take advantage of that extra capacity, those extra spindles to provide uh, more performance. Uh, all of the systems support uh, 4K ProRes uh, type formats. And of course, now we're also including Axel AI with every unit that we're shipping. So from that standpoint, Nick, uh, as far as the as far as the users users go with this, um, they, I noticed it says we have four Thunderbolt clients and upgradable to, to eight. Yeah. All these all these clients are Stornex shared, correct? So yes. therefore, everybody sees the same volume. Unlike if you add certain NAS volumes, now you have different volumes. Look at everybody will share the same volume, right? Yeah, it, it goes back to your point about using the, the file system store next is that, that that is a true shared uh, platform file system that so everyone can access exactly the same data and there's no kind of multiple mount points and things like that that you might be used to with a NAS system. Sounds good. Okay, let's go back and let, let's just summarize it up if we can and, and go through everything, okay. right? Sorry. So, the Simply Workspace, it's ideal for small work groups. It's fast, it's simple to install. You can do it in a studio, you can do it on set. It's a portable device, we call it a, a desk side configuration. Um, it's relatively heavy, 
but it'll sit on your desk or near your desk. No rack need it. it it's very stout and everything is self-contained. So there's no additional servers, no additional storage devices. It's all in one box. Uh, it's also an office acceptable sound level. So it's, it's powerful performance, but still works in your office environment. And it's been carefully designed to be as whisper quiet as possible. And one of the features that a lot of people don't get today is that it's direct Thunderbolt Connect. No expensive adapters. It just basically plugs in. One thing that obviously has been a limiting uh, factor for Thunderbolt 3 for, for numerous years is, is obviously the cable length. Really, you're, you're limited ideally to a one meter or potentially a two meter to, uh, uh, cable length. And, and there are a lot of varying, as Alex will know, there's a lot of varying quality of cable out there, which has caused problems for a lot of people uh, and adapters and things like that. But um, Corning have uh, recently uh, got uh, Intel and Apple certification for their Thunderbolt 3 cables. And we've got them arriving in stock actually this week in the kind of shorter uh, length. So at the moment we we have uh, five and 10 meter cables available and in the very near future, probably in a couple of weeks, we're going to be seeing the t uh, 15 meter, 25 meter. And then as Alex said, the 50 meter cables as well coming through. So I actually have one of the 50 meters here. So that's a 50 meter wow. corning cable. So you can, can you uh, show us the end? Yeah, yeah those cool. are, those are optical, but it's, it's yeah. basically a thunderbolt so, plug, right? Yeah, Gotta absolutely. hold it up a little. All right, Thunderbolt there plug, go. there you are. So that's an optical cable. So there's a lot of all the technology is in the is in the in the connector here. Uh, Corning, this has been under development with Corning and Intel for a significant period of time, but the cables are now and, uh, being produced. So and no additional good. power source or plug in. You just plug no, those in. <laughs> no, absolutely no additional power source. So you just plug directly from your Mac or Windows machine with your Thunderbolt connector straight into the workspace, and and job done. And I know we've been running a lot of those in the lab, right? So we have been running a lot of those in the lab. So it's <laughs> uh, it's the perfect way to social distance from a workspace. You know, I love it. Social more, distance. more than a two meter recommendation. We check all the boxes here as well. The last one in the boxes are powered by Stornex Six. Um, you know, this guarantees what I would consider um, a safe sharing. And uh, what what I mean by that is that. Stornex 6 has been around, the Stornex platform has been around for a long time. In fact, it's 100% compatible with XAN. It's the base of XAN. And we know that you know virtually every major television, television show and commercial were done for many, many years on XAN. So the, the quality is, is actually there. So from a technology standpoint, we definitely have a, have a big advantage. And as far as I know, Nick, correct me if I'm wrong, but it is the only system on the market today that is powered by Stornex 6. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. There's no other systems out there with that are uh, Thunderbolt and uh, and uh, powered by Stornex 6. And, you know, our engineers have spent an awful lot of time, you know, Alex, as you know, uh, you know, uh, creating a virtualized environment for Stornex to run in. And, you know, obviously that development has led to the ability to, you know, as we'll see, run Axel AI and VMs in there. and that that means that you know our our support services can be very proactive if if in the event of a problem with the system you know in, the, in that unlikely event you know if we needed to re uh, uh, reimage VMs bring them up you know change make changes we can do that remoting in and that's an extremely efficient uh, process you know I know a lot of storage vendors ship uh, you know uh, thumb drives uh, USB sticks with their storage to do that and you know that can be sometimes a bit of a painful process to restore from one of those whereas us we, we have it sort of loaded on the flash media in the system so we can do a quick restore and reconfigure if in, in that kind of unlikely event. Now Nick since you are the virtual product manager on this product we did get a couple questions that came in <laughs> so I want to I want to hit those uh, up if I can. Mm -hmm. So let me read them here. And please, for everybody again, remember, as Sam said, and as I said, down below your player, there's an area where you can type questions in. Please try to type allegedly. I, I don't read very well, so we're gonna try that. Um, how, oh, wow, okay. How do you build the RAID and format the storage so it's ready to use? 
That, that's a good question. That's a good question. So um, th this is one of the nice things about the appliance is it, it ships completely ready to use out of the box. Um, you know, it, it's out the box, install the drives, connect the cable, power on, download, install the drivers and reboot and you're running. So, you know, we've, we've had, you know, a lot of people using this and, uh, and a lot of people that have got extensive experience of configuring sort of SANS and things like that. And most of them, in fact, all of them have said it's the easiest to configure uh, SAN they've ever worked with. Okay, um, a similar question. How do I format the drive to use with Windows and Mac? Well, again, that's already done in the box. So if it comes pre-configured with the store next format on the drive. So for Mac, that's just a simple driver install, as I said, and a, and a profile, uh, a, a Mac profile install, which we all document. It's, it's literally two files to download and install. And again, for Windows, it's just one, one file. It's the store next client. We just run that, and so you select your drive letter and mount it, and it's all ready to go. Okay, great. Um, got a couple more here. Um, do I need Ethernet and Thunderbolt connections? Uh, uh, yes, it's a good question. Yes, you do. Uh, as Alex was talking about the metadata for the file system, you did. The metadata does run over an Ethernet connection, so you would need both an Ethernet connection and a Thunderbolt connection. Does that mean I have to buy an expensive switch? Uh, no, the the switching is is very low cost indeed. I mean. I, I think a uh, hundred dollars, fifty bucks for an eight-port uh, Netgear switch. If I can use a vendor's name, something of that ilk. <laughs> I, I think but, they're cheaper here in the U.S. too. Yeah, I think you can so, you know, it, twenty thirty dollars range. Very, very cost-effective switches. Yes, not uh, okay. no, no, no expense. In fact, usually our engineers say the dumber the switch, the better. So, <laughs> well, that's our engineer. Okay, I have two more two more questions. Oh, okay. One one that just came in, a great one here, and I'm gonna hold that one to last. My laptop is Thunderbolt. Will a Thunderbolt laptop work? Yeah, yeah, Thunderbolt. Uh, doesn't matter on the Thunderbolt. Uh, Thunderbolt 2, Thunderbolt 3. Uh, we only recommend the Apple Thunderbolt adapters. They're bi-directional. They're the best adapters you can buy. So if you're using Thunderbolt, to, if you're running Thunderbolt 2 on your laptop or workstation and you need connection to, um, to the workspace, then do use the Apple Thunderbolt adapters. They are the, you know, they're the best on the market. That's Unscrawl, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is true. And uh, we have a few more questions keep piling in here. First uh, first new one that came in is uh, Ethernet resharing. Does that mean the feature is built into Simply, accessing the same storage via Thunderbolt and Ethernet at the same time? Um, I, I think we can we can address that in section three, Yeah. right? So I, I'm going to hold that one there. Um, here's a good one. What kind of support is included with the system? Is that a drop and run or... Uh, what do we do? So, uh, in terms of support, you get access. We've we're, we've been busy working on a on a whole uh, port, uh, portal specifically for the workspace. So, uh, there's a whole uh, when you when you get your workspace, you get access to that portal. And behind that portal, there is uh, loads of how-to videos, extensive support documentation, kind of things like that. Uh, so, from that sort of point of view, the the system will also is easily configured to email home as well. So it's just a, a one touch button to to kind of fill in a support ticket and and send that to our engineers. And and of course, the unit's covered by a three year warranty as well. So uh, we've got your back with that. And of, obviously, you can buy spare hard drive modules and things like that to have on the shelf. But it goes back to the you know we're running RAID five or RAID six. We have redundant. Uh, SSDs for the metadata. We're using high quality flash drives internally for the uh, for the operating system and such. So you know the the quality of the components is is very high. Okay, two more came in. Um, one is um, while Macs have XAN already installed, is there a cost for Windows and Linux? Uh, there is a cost for Windows and Linux. Uh, we have our um, store next. Uh, we have a special price on the Windows and Linux bundles. So that'll be on our website. You can yeah, check far less out. than what most people. Oh yeah, 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 far less. Um, th there's a there's another. Uh, uh, actually, they keep popping in, so we're just going to go through them, and we'll probably go to section two, and we'll copy some of these in yeah. a little while. Um, does the simply workspace support storage manager? Um, uh. No, it doesn't support storage manager, no. Uh, we do have, however, and I think we're, Alex is going to cover this in some later slides, we do have a piece of software called Conveyor, Simply Conveyor. Some of you may be familiar with it. It's a sync, uh, it's a sync and transfer tool, and we can use that on the box to sync to other, other devices, so other, other, other workspaces, et cetera. 
or um, you know, for a low cost uh, archive solution, uh, we partner with uh, M Logic for their M tape, and you could simply run. And that's Thunderbolt with, Connect, right? And, and again, it's Thunderbolt. So you've got your Thunderbolt Mac or Thunderbolt Windows machine. You can connect the M tape in and, and run, you know, uh, you know, Yo Yota on the Mac or Archiware for Windows and Mac and, and such. There's loads of different sort of uh, lower cost. Axel, sort of, uh, what's that? Uh, Axel. Axel, Axel also. Yes, you can of course run Axel. <laughs> uh, and that would be your archives as well. But uh, yeah, there's there's the storage manager is is I guess I think be fair to say it's more of an enterprise product. So um, it's, it's know, high cost. As well, it's, so. it's high cost. Most and, people, most people, if we look at the entry level yeah, price of the exactly. simply worst space, so it, it, it's it's, it's not a fit, and, and you know we work uh, we work hard to get but uh, uh, get it to the price point that it's at. So uh, but yeah, archiving and things, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Thunderbolt, M tape, or, or the like uh, is is the way to go. Okay. And we just had a slew, and I'll call them a slew of of Stornax specific questions that we'll either take a little later because yep. we're running out of time, yep. or or we'll 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 definitely email them back. So if anybody yep. wants to leave us uh, an email. Info at gosimply.com is probably the easiest one. We'll get back to you. We'll, we'll answer those. We don't get to them here. So what I want to do is because of time and because Beautiful. Sam and Neil are sitting there so patiently, <laughs> Sorry, I, I want to jump back in, in, into where they are. So Simply Workspace does check all the boxes, except I, I, I take a little question on there. There's one more box on there, and it's uh, built in uh, Axel AI. And with that, I want to turn it over to Sam. Uh, to, to tell us a little bit more about Axel AI 2020, as it's called, and to, to take us through some of the features. And, and then, of course, I believe Neil is going to give us a live demo. So I let's will try through that. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, so um, for those of you who are not familiar uh, with Axel, uh, we have been around for almost eight years, and we kind of pioneered this idea of radically simple media management, um, which over time has evolved to include a lot of uh, automated AI type capabilities. So um, what we'll be talking about a little bit today and, and uh, what Neil will be demoing is the system that's bundled uh, you know, with the Simply hardware. Uh, it is uh, a very powerful uh, system. It runs in a Linux VM and essentially is a, a smart backend with a browser interface that lets you search and, and manage your media. Um, so we have, it's, it's kind of a modular stack. At the top, you have uh, different AI modules for analyzing the material, uh, including our Axel speech module. Um, you, can, you can enable that just with your credit card, go, go to a website, and then turn on transcription for less than $2 per hour. Uh, so very powerful transcription uh, at very low cost. And what that does is it makes a lot of your media that much more searchable. Axel has custom metadata fields, so you can tag the material manually as well. You can put in selects, you can create bins, and we do have interfaces uh, for both Adobe Premiere and Final Cut 10 uh, that are included with the software. One thing that uh, we are working on that we'll be announcing very shortly here uh, in the next couple of weeks is uh, a module to support Avid Media Composer and native MXF OP Atom files. Uh, that, along with our connector framework, uh, which is a kind of a modular workflow tool that's been on the market for about a year and a half, those are both uh, additional cost modules, but uh, again, very reasonable costs, kind of well in line with, uh, with the overall system pricing here. So if you wanted to add, say, Avid Media Composer support, or if you wanted to build custom automated workflows, uh, you, can, you can do that in, in a stepwise way, and you already have uh, most of the building blocks already included with the system. And probably the biggest uh, advantage of what we do is that it's no impact deployment, that basically we don't force a special format on, on your drive, we don't force you to organize your folder structures in a particular way or have your uh, media in a particular subset of formats. We catalog what's there. You work on the Simply Workspace, you edit what's there, and you set up your folders uh, in whatever way you would ideally like. It's not like, oh, you have to do these special ingest steps and follow these rules. Because in our experience, those break down pretty quickly 
uh, especially in post-production where people are bringing in material, they need to edit it quickly, they need to turn it around quickly. The last thing you want to do is tell them, oh, you just have to follow these three simple steps every time because very quickly they hit deadlines and they're unable to follow those steps. So we just scan what's there. You work uh, the way you would ideally like to work directly over Thunderbolt, directly from your Mac or PC, edit directly what's on the storage. And we're just in the background kind of scanning what's there, creating this uh, database view, if you will. Next slide. Oh, always impressive, Sam. Oh, thank you. What you guys do at Axel and, and for how inexpensive it is, not only because it's included in Simple Workspace, but just these add-on components, just incredible. I'm a little worried it's going to get sentient soon. That's my fear. And by the way, um, before we dive into the demo, the other thing I should mention is that we have uh, over 600 customers worldwide across a number of, of verticals. So everything from, uh, of course, broadcasters, people like NBC Universal and CBS, uh, movie studios like Warner Brothers and Paramount, uh, Corporates, we've done very, very well with corporate video, places like Coca-Cola, Patagonia, PricewaterhouseCoopers, and even things like churches and political campaigns and universities. So this is not just for, let's say, the, the high-end post community. This is for anybody that edits a lot of video. And increasingly, that work is being done in places that you would not expect. Uh, YouTubers is one example, um, where just the sheer amount of content that's being captured can often get into the hundreds of terabytes. Uh, reality TV is another, uh, and the list goes on. So if you have a bunch of video, uh, we're trying to help help solve this problem. And again, we're, we're super thrilled to be teaming up with Simply because in a sense, they're doing for the hardware and storage side what, what we are trying to do for the software and uh, search side. And with that, I think I'll, I'll turn it over to Neil for the demo. Yeah, we do have many Simply Ultra customers already mm -hmm. running uh, that's right axel axel that so is very true yeah yeah exactly so neil it's your show please give thanks, us a demo. thanks this is the axel user interface um my name is neil blake i look after the axel business in europe and i'm based just outside london what you can see here is um the web browser um i'm sitting on my pc um, and I'm logged into Axel on the network using its uh, IP address. And there's several things that are um, very clear of what I can see. I can see my catalogs. These are what I have access to. And the users that log into Axel have permission to see different catalogs. So the different catalogs would be your different folders on the storage. So we can see here, I've got an Audi one here. Um, I've got an Amsterdam one here with a lot of clips on here. And we point at your storage and we will present exactly what we find in the storage. So in this case, um, it's quite a shallow um, folder structure. So I've only got one subfolder, but if I was to look at a different folder uh, or different catalog, we can see that I've got lots of folders in there. And of course there might be subfolders um, inside there. And it's all about the media and all about being able to find the media. So if I just um, scrub through these clips so I can have a look and see what's inside a clip without having to open it, uh, I can open a clip. I've got my player window here. I can control the player from the mouse or the keyboard. But the most important part is my metadata. Over here on the right-hand side is the metadata that I've got for this particular file. Um, and we've got different styles of metadata. Um, and this is completely customizable. It's very simply customizable. Um, we would um, provide some operational training and then basically um, we, we help you start off. And there's different types of metadata. There's drop down menus, there's radio buttons, there's check boxes, there's free text fields here. So I can type something in here um, and I just hit save. And then everything I've entered becomes searchable. And I've got two types of search, and these are very simple search here. I've got simple search, and I've got an advanced search. So if I was just to start typing, you can see I've got tram there. So if I just type in tram, we can see it's found a number of files. I want to find trams and bikes, and we can see it's found a single file. Um, these are keywords that are as part of my metadata, um, and I can just enter them uh, until I find what I'm looking for. Um, let me give you another example of that. If I just do a search for A8, um, thinking about the uh, the Audi 
car type. Now, in this case, it's come back with um, far more files than I was expecting. I mean, you can see it's actually come back with 245 files. So that's too many for my um, little brain to cope with. So I'm just going to enter another search term. And we can see that it's narrowed that search down dramatically. And I can keep on adding keywords until I find the files I'm looking for. So that's very simple simple search and I can go off here and then I can do something with that file. For example, um, I might want to um, add additional comments or markers to the file. Uh, I might want to create uh, a bin that I would integrate with my editor um, from these particular clips or I can just go ahead and do something, something else. The advanced search allows me to narrow the search down um, to, to very restricted or very fine detail. So, for example, if I do a search for um, a car um, type here, and I'm going to search for A8. Now, the first time I searched for that using simple search, it came back with over 240 files. In this case, because I'm specifically searching for A8 in the car type field, it's come back with um, far fewer files. So the advanced search gives you really powerful tools to laser in on individual files. A couple of things that Sam mentioned. Um, we were talking about the um, ascribe or actual speech. Uh, if I do a search for a uh, heart here, um, we've got um, Joe Hart here. It's a simple search, so it's found Joe Hart as part of the name of the file. Um, it's also found Joe Hart um, because I've done a, um, a face recognition. Um, but um, So I'll just very quickly show you the faces. Um, so this is our AI module, which is an add-on to Axel. Um, and we can see that I've got Joe Hart down here. And if I type in Hart and jump to the area where Joe Hart is. Um, Axel's speech is uh, a built-in feature. Um, as Sam says, you log into our website and purchase credits. Um, and in this case, uh, it's processed the commentary track for this uh, football match. And as I watch the game here, um, as the commentator speaks, uh, the commentary appears uh, as a, as a, a burnt-in subtitle. Um, and I can then search for particular words in that. And also, because it's not perfect, I can correct it as the clip is playing. And once I've finished correcting it, I can also export that as a text file or as an SRT file. Um, so if you're doing uh, non-scripted um, documentaries, uh, this would be an ideal um, way of basically getting uh, what your uh, presenters or your um, actors are saying um, there. And with Axel Speech, um, what we do is you select the clip, we go to my user menu, and then I say Analyze Video. Um, and then it will start to uh, to process that there. Um, actually, and just a, a quick note about the, the menus. I'm just um, uh, concerned about the time here. Another very useful thing about Axel is there's only two user menus to learn. There's the main user menu, which is our cogwheel, and there is what we call an action button. Uh, and the action button appears if I select a clip or if I open a clip. Uh, and the action button has commands related to that particular clip um, there. And all of that depends on the user access rights and permissions. So this uh, would change dramatically depending on the, the user rights and permissions. And also, the main user menu also um, will change depending on what the user are in the system. So if I was to go back and do my search for um, tram and bike, and then go off to my user menu, we can see that it's now quite different. And I've got things like save search. So I can save the search term um, that I'm using. Uh, maybe if I want to search for that regularly, um, and that will come up in my filters. Um, and also, I can then start to create new bins. So um, a key thing for new users is I always say, if you're sitting there thinking, I don't remember what to do, always look at the cogwheel. And of course, I can select the file and then do something with the file as well. Um, here. Um, in terms of editor integration, um, we can edit, um, we can integrate via our bins. So I can add subclips to a bin, which I can export as an XML. I can also jump across to the editor here. Um, Axel, Sam may have mentioned that there was a panel for the Premiere Pro editor, which allows me to log in to the system. 
I'm using the same username and password as I did for the browser interface. So I will see exactly the same um, details um, here. And I can do the same searches as well. So we can see I've got that there typed in already. So I'll just, uh, if I search for tram again, search for a number of items there, and I can say bike. And I can play the clip in the window here without having to open it. And if this is the clip that I want, I can import that clip into the editor and then go off and do something. Going back to Axel's speech, uh, I've got a panel for the editor as well. And both the Axel panel and the Ascribe panels are free. You can install them as many editors as you want to install them. The Ascribe panel uses the same account as the Axel um, speech. And also, again, if you had multiple editors, they could be, all be using the same account. Um, so you don't have to have different accounts for different people. Um, so you can um, pull uh, your account across your whole team. And I can select the clip that I want to process. I can select the language that I want to process. And then I just say transcribe. And the system will then automatically um, um, process that clip and then present me with the, um, the subtitles or with the, with the transcription from that. Uh, so that's a very over, quick overview of the editor interface and also the Axel interface. Uh, if anyone would like a more detailed demo, we'd be happy to set up a webinar um, and um, answer specific questions. Um, and I think for now, that's it. Over to you, Alex. Okay. Thank you, uh, Neil. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Sam. The Axel AI website is basically the starting point for uh, all that. Okay, great. So I, I want to make sure that we, um, we, we get to questions questions on here, but the one thing that we've been doing is we've been telling you how easy, how simple, how great this this system is, but th there's one thing we really haven't talked about, and uh, this is uh, Nick's baby, and I'd love him to be able to give us a quick demo of the Simply Workspace Assistant, and the reason I mention that is that a number of the questions that we've been getting have been on this particular question. How do you manage this thing? So uh, I think it's really easy, but Nick, would you mind taking us through that real quick? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll keep it brief because uh, I know that time is, is pressing on. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, this is the Simply Workspace Assistant. Um, we've uh, purposely kept it very clean, uh, very easy to get a quick visual on, on the health of the unit effectively. And, and that's what the, the system's there for. It's, it, as, just, as we've gone through talking about uh, previously, uh, the unit comes completely pre-configured, so there's nothing for the user to do apart from plug it in and power it on. And when they get to the, the when the system boots for the first time, we have a uh, an IP address uh, that we set uh, uh, up here, so that's 192.168.128.150, and then you go to colon 8088, and that'll bring you up to the workspace assistant. So then it's uh, really just a case of uh, logging in. So you just log in with your with the credentials. Uh, Will I'm, you get it right I, the first time? Oh, yeah, hey, good job. I, okay. the, the pressure was on, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so and and really this this brings up all you need to know. So. For the first, when you come into the system for the first time, if you're on Mac or Windows, you just come in here and you select whichever platform you're on. That'll download the installer packages and you just in, uh, follow the installer packages for whichever operating system is on. Uh, typically, you'll then need to reboot either the Mac or the PC, and and then your drive and then your your workspace will be uh, mounted on the Windows drive letter you select in the case of Windows, or it'll just pop up on the desktop as you can kind of see over here, uh, available ready to use. Um, just real quickly, the uh, we've got the green lights here, which give us the uh, metadata controller. Just says our VMs are running, tells you the volume is up. Uh, we have a quick uh, overview of the data array, so it just tells you all the disks are healthy. Uh, this is a metadata array where we store the metadata, which is SSDs. And then we have a quick environmental temp, and this will tell you the temperature of the RAID system uh, and the MDC fan status and things like that. Uh, over here, we give you the uh, model number and the serial number, so if you, you need to contact us, you've got all those things straight to hand there. 
And then for the metadata IP address, we, uh, we, we give you a suggested range to connect to for your systems. So again, so it, pretty much everything you need is, is just on that front panel. And then you can obviously go into the menu. Uh, uh, we have some sections on troubleshooting, changing the network. Uh, settings if you need to and, and contacting support and about all pretty standard but the idea as we've said before is everything is kind of pre-configured and ready to go out the box there's nothing for, for, for a reseller or the end customer to do to configure it it's uh, one of our engineers likes to call it a vacuum cleaner it you plug it in and use it and I think that's a, a pretty apt description uh, you know in, in the ease of use of, of the system uh, and then just to call out Axel just to to use that, what all we do is we use exactly the same IP address uh, as we use for the assistant. So again, it's the one, you know, in this case, uh, 192.168.128.150. This time, you don't need to put any colons or anything in there. You just hit that, and that'll take you straight through to the uh, to the axle where it's running on the uh, on and virtualized on the on the system. And as you know, you can come in here and just sort of play the videos and, and go through the search features and such that you that uh, Neil was so kind to take us through earlier. So, really, in a in a nutshell, uh, that's uh, that's it. And I think what's really important for for most people to understand is that this is a full software defined virtualized system, just like the Simply Ultra. So the same technology that we deployed in the Simply Ultra, we're deploying in this very low cost system. And what's really nice about it is it's also designed for portability. We have a couple questions that came in regarding portability. One of the things you'll notice, there's a shutdown button on there. This ensures that when you're done with this, let's say you took it on site or it's remote, you're done with it, you push shutdown, it does all the housekeeping to bring the system down and make it pristine so you can put it in that Pelican case and move it around. One of the questions that came in was whether or not you need to have Ethernet if you take it to the field. The answer is yes. So you take a small Ethernet switch, you're going to have it all pre-configured, it'll be wired in, you plug it in, take it to the field, and go. So it's, it's just another quick step to do. But essentially, once you get in the field, you plug this on, you push the button just like you saw, the entire system comes up, you don't have to worry about any of the configuration, it's already there. When you're all done with it, you push the shutdown button in the interface, you shut it down, pretty much there. There's support online 24-7, 365, as Nick mentioned, we have a portal, and um, you just put in your serial number, your name, and boom, pops you up, knows everything about you, and you're all ready to go. Okay, so before we go to section three, which are our deployments, a bunch of questions came in. We're gonna try to get to, to some of them. I wanna jump into the Axel AI questions, yeah. if you're okay. We've got loads Nick, of which, questions. No, no, doing that. For it. there's loads. Okay, so, um, how many users of Axel AI 2020 come with Workspace, and what's included with the Axel AI 2020 bundle? We include uh, we include five users uh, in the in the in the bundle that we supply. Obviously, you can upgrade those. All of the kind of standard features that Axel and Neil talked about. There, you know, they, those kind of the the transcode, the metadata, the search, all all of those kind of things are in there. Uh, as Neil said, then you know the uh, you know and and, and maybe um, uh, the guys can talk more about it. There's optional upgrades for for the the AI modules, and I'm not sure whether Neil t touched on it or or Sam touched on it. Is the reverse proxy the ability to to share that out? So guys, I don't know whether you want to. So just to answer a couple of questions, um, we, one thing I didn't mention, we do support a very wide range of video, audio, and graphics formats, including photographs. Um, we do grab all the, um, the EXIF data and the, um, the uh, IPTC data um, and the XMP data. Uh, so if they're coming in from the camera, we'll grab them. Um, the AVID integration, I'm just looking at the questions here, um, yeah. you point Axel at an AVID media files folder. Um, we will parse that, figure out which groups of OP Atom files are an individual clip, and then we'll create a browse copy from that. You would add them to a bin and then export an AAF, which you would then drag into the bin in, a, in a, the AVID system. Um, in terms of um, video file formats uh, or video um, frame rates or frame sizes, basically we don't care um, whether it's um, 25, 24, 29 point whatever it is, 9, 7, 50, 30, 60. Um, we don't mind. Um, so I mean, recently I've been shooting some 4K stuff at 50 um, frames. I've also been shooting 2.7K at 100 frames. Um, Axel just processes it. 
um, and uh, just presents it in the user interface. Um, and and, and uh, way, one, one question was asked is whether there's a, a special GUI um, uh, add-on for Media Composer. We don't have that yet. We would love to as soon as Avid starts to authorize that kind of thing. But at the moment, uh, they, they don't have a plug-in panel architecture the way Adobe Premiere does. So uh, we're, we're a bit of, in a bit of a holding pattern there. But as Neil pointed out, we're, we're doing both the cataloging of the uh, native OP out of media and also generating an AAF from our bins so that you can do a series of selects and have those exported into Media Composer. Uh, in terms of Lightroom, if you are processing content through Lightroom, um, if Axel is um, looking at the folder structure um, of your Lightroom outloom output, um, we will then find the files. Um, you could then um, provide access to your clients for these particular files, so then they could um, search for content. Um, you can add metadata to photographs as well um, that make them searchable. And, and also, by the way, in audio processing, we have very good uh, timeline display of audio and audio only features so that you can actually tag in the timeline there as well. Um, a final a final point uh, to, to what um, uh, Nick and Alex were talking about, the remote access aspect of the software is actually suddenly like our hugest selling feature. <laughs> for a long time, I people said, oh, I might want to access this from home, but I really, it's not that big a deal. And in the last 60 days, it's been like the number one topic of conversation. So having that built into the box, that it's a browser interface, that whether it's video, audio, or still images, that you can search them, do selects, upload and download from home, uh, that is a massive thing, particularly because a lot of these lockdowns that are being lifted may, you know, have a rebound effect and in, in 60 days, they may come around and say, everyone go home for another another 30 days. And so, you know, I think for the next year, everyone's gonna be a little bit uncertain as to what their way of working is gonna be. So a tool like this that, that makes your storage remotely accessible is probably a, a very big deal. Yeah, and you guys have really answered, um, you know, we had like 12 questions come in, thanks for taking them interactively, but there's two others that came in in particular. Uh, the, they're both to Nick. So uh, the assistant doesn't seem to have an option to update the system. How do we do that? Oh, uh, okay. Someone's so, been watching that menu as you've been driving yeah, down. There. Someone was paying so. eagle eyes. Um, so uh, just quickly, yeah, you don't need to effectively. That the system will will look for updates online, and and if they're if and when they're available, they'll just get installed in the background. So no need to worry about it. Okay. Makes Last it question. Then we're going to move to section three deployments. Um, how much are the Corning optical cables? They look quite good, but look quite expensive. Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> they are, I, I, um, I must admit, I, mine's gone blank. I should have written it down. Um, they're, they're a few hundred bucks for a cable for like a So five. they're not, not outrageously expensive. No, 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 no. And, and to be honest, there, there's very little price difference. Uh, they, if people remember the older Thunderbolt 2 cables, there's, the, the cables got quite expensive the longer they got. Actually, with Thunderbolt 3, the, the cables are, uh, are, are pretty uh, are priced pretty well together. So there's not a lot of difference between the, the, the cost from a, even a 5 meter to one of the 25s or 50 meter cables. So it, it, they're, not, they're not expensive. They're certainly cheaper than going to buy a, like a 10 gig Thunderbolt adapter, 10 gig Ethernet to Thunderbolt adapter. Let's talk about what deployments look like in a world of, of the Simply Works Plays. And I'm going to start it off with what we call the small work group. And it's a pretty simple configuration. Uh, the one that, that I chose here that, that people seem to be extremely interested in, this is very popular for us. It's 96 terabytes overall. We talked a little bit about capacities and pieces. It's about 80 terabytes usable. Sustains over 1.5 gigabytes per second. It's a very fast system. Four Thunderbolt clients on Stornex 6, the latest version. Uh, of the Store Next 6 is, is included. And again, this comes with a three year, 24 seven, 365 online support. The configuration is pretty simple. Uh, Thunderbolt and ethernet plug four computers in. There's, there's really not a lot to that necessarily. You just plug it in and go. There was a question about reshare that came up and this is the way we usually accomplish reshare. So a uh, reshare capable computer, and I'm just showing a Mac mini in this case, can be connected to the workspace on Thunderbolt. And because it's Stornex, we're able to reshare that out via Ethernet. And that could be one gig, 10 gig Ethernet, depending on the computer we use, out to a number of Ethernet clients. So that allows 
our four user to have four direct connect Thunderbolt users, but have several um, Ethernet users as well. And again, we're not saying those Ethernet users should be set up for 4K editing necessarily, but for review proxy stations, uh, being able to do ingest and delivery, they're an ideal solution. Nick, do you want to add anything to that? No, I, th I think that that's a pretty. The only the only thing that you know could be we could add in is is for that kind of archive workflow that we discussed earlier. Is any of those Mac computers or you know previous slide the window computer could have a Thunderbolt attached tape drive and and that's the easy way to archive from the workspace. Absolutely. And then the the other piece of this is well what Nick talked about, so that you can actually drive to uh, fifty meters away using the Corning optical cable. So a small work group. Can all of a sudden become a, a pretty pretty long distance work group if needed. And this we're just showing this on two clients, but that could easily be on all four clients. And I would consider that um, a little bit of uh, social distancing. So you'd be in, in great shape right there. So Nick, I know that you uh, you have done a lot of work with a number of our customers, especially our early beta customers. In this, there was a lot of film scanning work. So you want to drive us through how that might work? Yeah, it's um, uh, certainly the uh, the idea uh, is really brought up, been made possible by uh, Black Magic with Cintel Scanner and, and really the Black Magic RAW format. So that obviously takes a uh, scanning process that should be, you know, maybe a gig, gig and a half a second or more, and you know, using their RAW format shrinks the sort of data needs right down to you know maybe five or six hundred megabytes a second. So. You know, you could quite easily have uh, one workspace or potentially even two workspaces linked together, connection to one of those Cintel scanners using the Blackmagic RAW format. And, you know, and you could have one one workstation ingesting, and then you could have another, you know, doing a sort of color correction or, or repairing the, you know, repairing the images and things like that. So, you know, we've got a couple of customers that are, you know, testing that at the moment, and it, you know, it's going, it's a, it's a valid workflow. It seems to be going well. It's keeping, you know, it. The, the storage is kind of matching the cost of the of the scanner rather than you know having to buy kind of you know larger lumps of of storage. Obviously, if you if you need to scan at, at full raw DPX EXR, that's what we have the Simply Ultra for, and you know we've got numerous installs with you know uh, many different uh, manufacturers of scanners where that workflow works really well. Yeah, and in this case, look at this. This is 336 terabytes, and you're talking about. Yeah a quarter petabyte here. So you really get performance out of it. You can be doing color correction, scanning, output at the same time. Every, everything can be going on. So really easy deployment with the workspace. Essentially, and, you know, in this case, you got eight wires, including including Ethernet. So yeah. it's pretty, pretty simple. Now, one of the areas that I, I think uh, we're seeing more and more happen, especially as, as people go back to work and they're working in different areas, is multiple work groups. And multiple work groups are usually even something as small as the very inexpensive uh, Simply Workspace 48. So this is 48 terabytes raw, about 40 terabytes usable, depending on whether you're on the Mac or the PC. And again, it's the same better than 1.5 gigabytes per second. We, we round it down a little because we want to be really conservative. But this particular system is an inexpensive system that you can use in many work groups in an organization. And it kind of looks like this. If you can imagine a table, I, I'm just showing the setting here of a table with a workspace and four individual users, Macs or PCs, could be all Macs, could be all PCs, depends on, on what your, your flavor is and, and what application you're running. But essentially, it, it looks a little like this. You have a building, and this is you know your typical building layout, different work groups in here, and you, you can populate these work groups, and they don't have to be this size, across them. And as Nick mentioned earlier, we have a tool called Simply Conveyor, and what Simply Conveyor will allow you to do is to take all of these work groups and to join them together. So you can not only share content, but you can sync and transfer content. So if the work groups need to work together, they can all be Axel enabled at this point, and we can uh, share that content across them with Simply Conveyor. Very inexpensive and simple way to be able to share with multiple work groups. Uh, one of the other areas that we, we think you know, constantly, we're, we're getting questions about this, and we think this is going to come back in a big way as production turns on, as everybody stays safe and moves into production, will be on set and remote. Uh, I know, Nick, you've worked with a number of companies to put this in place. In fact, we have people using this now, so you want to take us through the on set and remote workflow a little bit? 
Yeah, absolutely. The, the compact nature of the workspace kind of lends itself to kind of a DIT cart type uh, applications where you might have, uh, you know, I, I was on a film shoot with, uh, organized by a televisual magazine in the UK just before lockdown and they had uh, Sony Venice cameras and, and uh, several drones and, and that media was kind of all coming into a couple of workstations that was connected to the um, to the workspace, um, you know, we were using the uh, Axle to transcode that, uh, that to make the proxies. And so it was vastly speeding up their kind of regular workflow uh, of having multiple machines writing to multiple different storage types. It's just bringing all those kind of rushes, uh, you know, uh, off the cameras into one point where they can be processed, uh, you know, and archived from, from one shared storage system. So, um, you know that's uh, that's we we do we've you know we've had a big market for our simply ultra in that you know at the high end for for film you know full features um, but you know this is this is something for the independents or those sort of features with sort of smaller budgets so um, yes yeah. those those are just some of the deployments yeah. I mean there are many others that we can do and mm -hmm. we're running out of time yeah. here but I wanted to hit just a couple of questions that we got that I think were really important. One is how much does it cost for Simply Conveyor to be added to Workspace? Uh, we have a few different versions of Simply Conveyor. Um, the the base version, which uh, which is fine for most people, uh, that's uh, about six hundred dollars, six hundred six six nine five dollars list. So it, it's pretty inexpensive, uh, and that's that license. And that's for a get, year, a year license. That's a year for license. Yeah. So we we have other versions that that are more expensive that effectively help with kind of. Uh, um, transferring data across kind of geos between the US and UK, for example, but for an, in a closed network like this, that the the, the, the the first product we offer is fine. Okay, one more question, and then we're going to wrap it up really quickly. Uh, will Workspace connect to my existing storage, either the Simply Ultra or other storage? Uh, it would, wouldn't connect directly, but again, w with regards to like the Simply Ultra, we could we could use Conveyor to move data uh, between the Workspace and the Ultra, or vice versa. And again. Uh, that's how we would handle it for other uh, storage uh, devices that are connected to Mac and Windows. We could sync the data from, from one of those clients to the workspace and vice versa. Okay, fantastic. So we're just about done. What I want to make sure is that everybody can contact us. So uh, for our friends at Axel, who are below us there, I believe um, to contact Sam, it's yeah, Sam. Sam at Axel.ai and Neil is Neil at Axel.ai. That's A-X-L-E. And Nick, if they want to reach you directly? Uh, they can email me at nickw at gosimply.com or nickw at globaldistribution.com. Either works for me. Great. And I'm Alex at, at gosimply.com. And to just view the website, it's uh, gosimply.com or globaldistribution.com. And with that, I think we're out. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Guys. Thanks. Stay safe. Cheers. Stay safe. Yeah. Thanks.